Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today I'm going to be basically setting up and reviewing an IQ3500 Generac inverter base generator. Uh, this is a portable generator that uh, clocks in at around the thousand to twenty, uh, excuse me, thousand to twelve hundred dollar range at the time of making this video, uh, and uh, it is a thirty five hundred watt generator, so it's uh, uh, able to power quite a bit of stuff. Uh, I'm evaluating it for emergency communications and field deployment. Uh, some things uh, that I like and some things that uh, I'd love to see fixed. But you know what? All in all, watch the review and get a good idea if it fits in your garage. Anyway, with that, uh, hey, don't forget to subscribe. As always, if you subscribe and click on the notify icon, you'll get notifications whenever I do a new video. And uh, if you like this video, click like, will you? Any questions or comments, go ahead and make them down below. Oh, and by the way, bonus, we will be comparing noise levels and other things to the uh, EC, um, or excuse me, EU 2200i Honda. So uh, stay tuned for that as well. We'll have a full uh, verbal review at the end of the video. Thanks for watching and let's get going, huh? Hey, everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today, we're going to evaluate the Generac IQ3500. 3500 watt portable generator that is inverter base. Um, now, portable, eh, it's 110 pounds without fuel in it. So uh, it's going to take a couple people probably to move it any kind of distance. Uh, however, you know, I'm an old guy and I can pick this thing up and move it off and on a cart. So uh, it's still usable but uh, it certainly would be better with two people. That said, uh, it is 3,500 watts. It is an inverter generator, and they claim that it's quieter than the Honda. Uh, I happen to be a big uh, EU 2200i fan, uh, but unfortunately, we're evaluating this generator because we can buy this generator in California right now in 2023. Honda has discontinued the sales of the majority of their generators. You just can't get them in California. They're not manufacturing them for California. Uh, and if you try to buy them out of state, you've got to prove a local address out of state. So uh, you're pretty much not going to buy a brand new Honda in 2023 unless something changes. And of course, who knows if that's going to happen. Anyway, this makes a lot of claims. Uh, one of the claims that it makes, of course, is that it's quieter than the EU series. And uh, we're going to put that to the test as well. But what I want to cover, first of all, is what comes with this. It actually comes with break-in oil. This is initial oil to put into the generator to run it for the first 20 hours. After that, you change that and you should switch it to synthetic according to the manual. And of course, it does come with the full manual, the warranty information and everything else. Um, but I've never had a generator come with a funnel for the oil. It's a nice long funnel. It has to be to get to it without making a big mess. But I, I was actually surprised and very happy that that was part of what came with it. And of course, it comes with tools. Uh, I've got a spark plug wrench and I also have a Phillips screwdriver. Now, I have to say, this is an interesting little generator. Let's do a walk around. All right, so this is the business side of the Generac. This is where we can take a look at the actual internal portion of this. And you know, this is very well made. This is a metal case. We have reasonable access over here to the air cleaner and the carburetor. Down in here, if you can see it, there's the oil fill and also the oil level check. So, all in all, everything's really compact, but easy to get to. All right, so here's the control panel, 
And this has everything that I would expect and a little more. Uh, I have a basic run meter. Tells me how many hours, how much output it's doing. Um, kind of cool. We'll take a look at that once we get it running. I have an economy switch. Here's how I turn it to run. And that's how I put the choke on and off. And that's how I shut it off. I don't know, and we're going to test to see if it'll empty the fuel. Um, again, an electric start. I've got two USB charging ports. I have the connections to link two of these together with a 25 amp reset. And over here, I have a total of 20 amps coming out of these two plugs. And then I have another 30 amps that comes out of the quick connect, which adds up to a little more than I think this thing can actually output. But, uh, you know, again, what are you going to do? So, back behind this panel, I'll just unscrew it, is my battery. And I'll have to get that hooked up for the electric start. And of course, if the battery's dead, well, there you go, it's got a pull start. Um, we'll give it a shot at pull starting it, see how difficult it actually is to rope start this. A uh, little bit bigger motor than a 2200, but we'll check it out. Anyway, I'm going to get this thing oiled up, get some fuel in it, get the battery hooked up, and then we'll take it outside, fire it up for the first time, and see how she does. All right, I'm going to try to get some oil in this thing, and I'm going to try not to block the shot too much. Ugh. But odds are I'm going to, at this angle, let's move it over here a little bit. There we go. So I'm just going to spin this off, being careful not to drop it. Of course, nice little dipstick right there. I'll set that down there. I am going to take a rag, I'm just going to shove it down in the bottom here to catch anything that I may fray with, and we're going to use that there, look at that, look at that funnel. Okay, so that's going to be, okay, eh. uh, so I'm going to need to be slow with this, and I may just put this rag down there just in case on the ground. And I'm going to open up my free quart of oil. There we go. All right. And it's sealed on the top right there. Okay, so let's see if I can keep from making a big, giant mess here in my office. And the reason, I believe it or not, I'm doing it here in the office is because um, I, it's raining outside. Yeah, believe it or not, California raining. And I'm just very slowly pouring this in. I'm going to get it pretty pretty close. This is supposed to be exactly 600 milliliters, which is exactly what the crankcase capacity is. All right. I got a little in the bottom there. And I'm going to uh, try to Get a flashlight and see what it looks like. See if I got enough oil in there. I don't want to overfill it. I can actually take the dipstick. Oh. Okay, it's showing that there's oil, but it's showing it's a little low. And there's a little bit left. So do I dare? Ah, I dare. I 
And you know what? I think, oh yeah, I'm there. That sucker is full. All right. So this goes back in here. We're going to get it screwed back down. And snug. And, ah, I didn't make a mess. What do you know? That's one in a row. Now, while I'm in here, I do also notice that I have a fuel drain plug right there. I want to make sure that that's actually tight, which it is. Okay. All right. So, now we're going to move on to getting the battery hooked up. All right. Well, let's get the battery out and get it hooked up. I am not sure what tools I'm going to need for this. So, let's see. There that is. And it, there are my cables. It looks like I can just pull this down to take that out. And, uh, hmm. Let's see. There we go. Ah. Now that doesn't look too hard so far. Ah. Well, will you look at that? Looks like all I need is a Phillips screwdriver. Let me go grab, well, and actually, you know what? I'm going to grab a 10 millimeter because that's what that is. So let me run and grab one. I'll be right back. All right, 10 millimeter, and I was wrong. That is not a 10 millimeter. So let me go grab a Phillips. Unless, of course, Ah, so it's a 5 sixteenths. Well, there you go. Keep threatening to grab that uh, Phillips, but I certainly don't need to. This is really what it is. There we go. So, need to be careful. This is the positive. So, ah. I'm going to scooch this in a little and get the positive on here, but it's got a little floating nut on the bottom, so i got to be kind of careful to make sure I get that. And you notice I haven't hooked the ground up. An old uh, mechanic trick is you always attach the positive before you attach the ground on a battery. I don't want to get this too tight, but I want to get it tight enough. Now I can just slide this over and cap it there. Now it's safe for me to mess with. Now same thing on this side. Just gonna loosen that up. And I notice back here there is also a fuse that's attached here. I'm not really sure what the fuse is technically going to, but that's all right. I'm sure I can find that out in the manual. All right, now this, whoop, we're going to get it right on here, like so, just like that. All right. All right, we're going to get this tightened up, like so, just like this. Go. Slide that on. Ugh. Gonna make sure I have this in position. Pop. Whoop. Come on, baby. There we go. Pop it in like this. There we are. Like that. I can now. Pull this down, I hope, and get it in there. 
like so. Is that actually in there? I'll be darned. I think it is. Let me see if I can. Just uh, trying to make sure that I got this. Yeah. And, uh, And you know what? Got lots of room on that side. Not so much on this. So, and of course, I gotta get my hand out. I'm gonna pop this back out. And just do another little adjustment on the battery here. Let's see, there we go. I'm gonna turn this a little bit inward. Because I think that's not a good spot for that. Turn the entire battery around. That might be the hot ticket. Okay. Now let me see. Hey, you know what? That works. I like that. Okay. All right. I'm just going to get that back in and get this tightened back up. So I should have no fuel in here. So, but I do have oil. Let me uh, pull the pull rope a couple of times just to get some circulation of oil in there. And uh, what the hell? Let's see. All right. That, less the fuel, is ready to go. Well, hi, everybody. Stu, AG6AG. And, well, you know, I said we were taking this outside and you were going to join us for the first start of this and you'd be able to see it from the get go. And, you know, I shot all of that, and I ran into a horrible problem. The microphones that I were, was using did noise cancellation, so you couldn't hear the generator at all. It was the quietest generator because the recording process was stripping its noise out, which I will tell you what microphone that is in the comments if you're looking for something that's able to do that. Uh, but... I am going to duplicate that and show you all the tests that I did, and I want you to be able to hear it for yourself. So let's go ahead and change some shot angles and get on with the show. All right, well, let's go ahead and get this started up. Um, just want to go over the controls one more time with you. Uh, this is how you uh, turn the fuel on as well as turn the generator uh, on and put it in choke mode. Um, over here is the run meter, all sorts of different uh, information on output and things like that. Uh, we have a 25 amp uh, disconnect plug right here, as well as a 20 amp standard plug. We also have the breakers for those. Over here, we actually have a connection to go to another generator in order to link them together to multiply the amount of current this thing makes okay in other words if I hook this to another 3500 that would give me a 7,000 uh, watt boost so it's it's a neat little setup here so our electric start our economy button yeah this right here so, if you remember, I said that I wanted to see if I could actually shut the fuel off and have the uh, uh, system running. And, uh, no, I couldn't do that. I basically, it was either off or on, I couldn't have it run out of fuel to empty the fuel bowl for storage. And, uh, although it does have the ability to drain the fuel bowl, uh, that uh, that's leaking gas on the ground and stuff like that and I just didn't want to go there with it um, 
Now, I do own the propane conversion kit for this. So, in the propane conversion kit, it comes with a kill button. And the kill button is designed to go right where that USB connection was that we showed in the initial videos. So, again, I made a choice to install this so I could run it out of fuel. Anyway, with no further ado, let's get this thing wound up, huh? I'm going to go ahead and turn this all the way over to run and then to choke. Let me stand up here and get down on one knee. I'm going to verify that my economy is off. I have nothing hooked to it. Let's push the start. How about that? All right, so let's back off a little bit. But before we do that, I want to let it run for a second. And I want to test if this unit is bonded. And I'm not sure if you can see that. I'm going to show it closer a little bit later, but I can see that it's not. So let's unplug this, and I'm going to grab a common bonding adapter. And this common bonding adapter basically bonds the common and the ground. If you don't understand at all what I'm talking about, then I encourage you to go up on the internet and investigate it. I have to tell you that it's important that if you're hooking to a house, this isn't bonded, okay? But we're out here in the field hooking to nothing. So we want it to be bonded for safety. Do a search on common bonding before you do anything like this. And all I'm gonna do is plug that in like that. And we're gonna look again. And look at that, I've got two lights on. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, anyway, I will show that. So let's change our camera angle again and do some tests. All right, well, let's answer the question that inquiring minds have. How loud is this thing, right? So I've got my little handheld DB meter. I'm going to walk up to the camera and not talk. And I want you to take a look. I'm going to shut up now. All right. Actually, that's pretty low. Uh, now, let's try one other thing. Let's put it in eco mode. And let's see if there's really any difference. Alright then. So, let's get set up for another test. Well, so let's take a look at what this actually is putting out. I'm going to move up a little closer. I'm going to show this to you here, and what we basically have is our voltage, which is right now at about 125 volts AC. And let's take a look at our frequency. This is Hertz, and that is 59.9260. This all looks great. So now, let's hook a load up to this and see not only where the noise goes with the load, but we're going to see where everything else is sitting as far as the load on the generator. All right, so now we're going to hook this 1500 watt heater up to the generator to see how loud it is under load and see how many amps it's actually drawing. So let's go ahead. I'm going to turn it on. Oh, you hear that little darling load up a little, don't you? And right now, there we go. It looks like it's fairly stabilized now. That's what we're running in watts for this uh, particular heater. I'm going to go ahead and set this down. And I'm going to get a dB meter here. Let's see how much louder it is. I'm going to stop talking.
really not that much louder in my opinion. Now, I'm going to go ahead and bring this down slowly. I'm going to be out of shot for a little bit. Uh, and then I'm going to go put eco mode on and see what the real difference is with that. Okay, we're bringing it all back up. So that pretty much completes most of the test. Well, okay, so now let's do the audio tests on the 2200. I have to tell you, this probably isn't a real fair comparison. 3500 watts versus 2200 watts. But I want to know which one is louder. So let me get this thing fired up. Full disclosure. I did start this thing earlier so it would start up faster because it has a rope start. I didn't think you'd want to watch me pull the rope 40 times to get fuel back in. So let me go ahead and turn on the DB meter and here's the Honda. All right, so now let's put it in eco mode. All right, well, so we should probably do the same test that we did with the other one. Although I can't load this thing with uh, that much power because it's only designed to take 1800 watts con uh, continuous. But to be fair, if I put this on 75800 watts, then I have about a 50% load just like I did with the other unit. Do the math. I'll take it out of eco. And oh, better not forget my bonding. All right, so let's see what our voltage and our watts are. There's our voltage. Well within perimeters. And let's take a look at our hertz. Will you look at that? So, you can't ask for much more than 60 hertz on a US 120 60 hertz system. Now, let's go ahead and get a load on this. All right, let's go ahead and put this on low, which is about 750. We got a bit of a load there. And I'm at about 700 watts. Oh, climbing up about 960, so we are comparable with the 35 at this point. Let's see what our noise factor is. All right. So, as we dig a little bit deeper here, I am going to go ahead and put on the eco mode and see what happens. All right, let's put the unit back on. We got a load. And there it is, slowly building. All right, now let's take a look where our DB is. So, there you have it. We've compared the two. Now let's go in and figure out what the differences are. Wow. Was that a test or what? I really had a good time doing that. I had a good time setting up the Generac. Uh, it is really a nicely built generator. I like it a lot. Now, how it's going to hold up in the long term, I don't know. I may report back with more information on that. But as 
far as a comparison, I mean, my goodness, uh, the top uh, information is for the Honda and the Generac information is below it. The Generac IQ3500 beat out the Honda EU2200i on noise level. When Generac says that they're quieter than a Honda, that's not false advertising. They actually, we proved it today. Now, again, we're comparing a bigger generator to a smaller generator. Where the Honda is a smaller generator, you think the smaller generator would be even more quiet. But uh, I was actually shocked and impressed when it came down to uh, the power capability, the stability of the voltage, and the uh, um, cycles and everything else. I feel comfortable plugging electronic equipment into it. Um, if it was lighter, it would be great, but hey, it is 3,500 watts, right? And the biggest bonus of all, I can buy it in California, at least until uh, the end of 2023. Um, and if you're unaware and live in California, there's a law coming up that's going to really uh, make it difficult to get portable generators. Um, and uh, you probably want to do a little research on that if you don't know anything about it, but... Uh, uh, I have a lot of people coming to me, a lot of amateur radio operators that come to me and ask what generator to buy. And up until the time I couldn't get the Hondas, it was always a Honda. Uh, I am now going to recommend the Generac. Anyway, I want to thank you so much for joining me. It was great sharing this little time. And uh, have any questions, make them in the comments down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. And you know what? If you like the video, click like too. And oh, that's enough of that. 73 guys. And this is AG6AG hoping I hear you on the air.